Unit 17. Fears. Page 66. 2. Let's listen. What is happening in these pictures? Listen and number the pictures. 1. Are you sure you don't want me to drive? Look at the traffic. Hey, don't worry. I'm fine. Whoops. Careful. Not so fast. Don't worry. I'm fine. Now, what's this thing again? The brake. I said brake! Oh, yeah. Two. I think there's someone in the house. Are you sure? Yes. The lights were off when we left. That's funny. Oh, I'm sure it's okay. Be careful. Three. Look, over there in the garden. Where? There. Oh, do something quick. Oh, I'm so frightened of those things. Oh, it's okay. I've got it. Are you really frightened of this? It's the garden hose. Four. Quick, look in the kitchen. Where? There, behind the door. Oh, I hate those things. Can you do something? It's just a little mouse. Nothing to be afraid oh, of. Oh, I can't stand mice. Do something. <coughs> Go get it, Fluffy. Five. I'm sure I saw a big black spider under the bed. A spider? Are you sure? Let me check. Did you get it? Oh, yes, here it is. The missing button from my coat. I've been looking for it for days. Six. Listen, I can hear someone downstairs. Are you sure? Yes. Listen to that noise. Let me check. Be careful. Don't worry. Everything is all right. We forgot to turn off the TV. Page 67. 3. Let's listen. Task 1. People are describing fears. Has each speaker's fear decreased over the years? Listen and check the correct answer. 1. The first time I got on an airplane, I was terrified. I just couldn't understand how a big, heavy thing like a plane could stay up in the air. After we were in the air for a while, I spoke to the man next to me. He was an airplane engineer and explained how airplanes stay in the air. That really helped because I understand how planes work. I was still a little nervous on the next few flights, but now... I really love flying. 2. I was afraid of snakes when I was a kid. I remember going to the zoo and seeing them there, and I thought they were kind of cute. But once, when I was out hiking, I nearly stepped on one and it tried to bite me. It was really ugly, and I'm sure it was poisonous. Since then, I've been pretty terrified of them. I could never touch one now. 3. Some people hate spiders. They think they're really creepy. I guess I felt like that when I was a kid. I used to scream if I saw a spider on the wall. My friend had a pet spider, and I couldn't go near it. Then, when I went to college, we had a spider collection in our biology lab. When we studied them, I decided they were interesting and intelligent, too. I kind of like them now. Four. I was always afraid of the water as a kid. I would never go into the pool or swim at the beach. I was sure I would drown. Then I took swimming lessons in high school. Once I learned how to swim, I felt different. Now I love the water, and especially the beach. I feel totally safe because now I know how to take care of myself in the water. Five. I don't really like driving on the freeway. I guess it's because the traffic moves so fast. I didn't used to be so nervous. I used to travel all over using the freeways. But one day, I was in a car accident and I lost all my confidence. So nowadays, I only use the freeway when it's really necessary. 6. I was so afraid of animals when I was younger. All kinds of animals. Dogs, cats, even horses. I didn't like the way they felt when I touched them, and I was sure they were going to bite me. I even hated going to the zoo. 
That all changed when I turned 13 and my mom gave me a puppy for my birthday. He was so cute and friendly that I realized an animal can really be your best friend. Page 67. 3. Let's listen. Task 2. Listen again. Circle the correct statement. Page 68. 4. Let's listen. Task 1. People are talking about their fears. Is each statement true or false? Listen and check the correct answer. 1. When I was a kid, I got stuck in an elevator when the electricity went out, and since then I've always been afraid of elevators. I was all alone, and there was no way to get out of the elevator. I hated that feeling. Now I almost never use elevators. I take the stairs instead. If I have to take an elevator, for example, if I'm in a really tall building, I make sure there's someone else in the elevator with me. The only problem is, sometimes I have to wait a long time until another person comes along. 2. I don't like swimming in the ocean because the waves are so dangerous. They always knock me over. I also hate the way that seaweed touches me when I swim in the ocean. I always think it's some animal that's going to bite me. You know, like a shark or a jellyfish. That's why I only swim in a swimming pool. The only problem is that the pool in my neighborhood is always crowded. 3. Dogs are the only animals I'm really afraid of. But not all dogs, just big dogs. I don't mind cats and birds because they don't usually bite you. But dogs? That's a different story. I'm sure it's because of the time a huge dog chased me when I was a kid. It only bit me once, but I've been really scared of dogs ever since. I never visit anyone if they have a big dog in the house. That's a real problem because a lot of my friends have really big dogs, so they always have to come to my house. 4. I don't know why, but I'm really afraid of heights. I work in a tall building, and I can't even stand to look out my office window. Right away, I get this feeling like I'm suddenly going to fall. I'm really afraid. Of course, airplanes are the worst. I'm really nervous when I have to fly. The biggest problem is that there are some fun things I can't do with my kids. The other weekend, I took them to an amusement park. They were excited about going on the roller coasters, but I was too afraid to take them. My kids were really disappointed. I felt terrible about letting them down. Page 68. 4. Let's listen. Task 2. Listen again. What problem does the fear cause for each person? Circle the correct answer. <music> Unit 18. Telephone Messages. Page 70. 2. Let's listen. Listen to the messages on Susie's voicemail. Complete the information about each call. 1. Hi, this is David. Remember me? We met at Bob's party. David, you know, the one with curly blonde hair and green eyes? Anyway, just calling to say hello. I'd love to see you again. Can you call me tonight? My number is 981-2146. I'll be home after 9. Thanks. Bye. Two. Hi, Susie. This is Mary calling. Sorry I missed you. I've got some really interesting news. It's about that cute blonde guy we met at the party. Why don't you call me? I'm at my mom's place. The number is 461-5793. Try to call me between 6 and 7 tonight. Bye. Three. Hello. I'm calling for Susan. My name's Peter Rogers. That's R-O-G-E-R-S from Morningstar Travel. I'm calling about your plane reservations. Please call me back at 391-6451. The best time to reach me is between 2 and 6 p.m. Thanks.
four. Hello, this is Linda Wong. Susie, could you call me on Saturday in the morning or afternoon? Do you have my number? In case you don't, it's five three six eight seven seven five. Thanks. Bye. Page seventy one. Three. Let's listen. Task one. Listen to these messages on Andre's voicemail. Circle the correct message. One. Hello, this is Jim from Jim's Auto Repair. I'm calling about your car. I'm afraid it's not going to be ready until Friday. You can pick it up any time after four.、Uh, by the way, the car radio isn't working properly. Do you want us to fix that too? Please give us a call today to confirm. Two. Hi, this is your neighbor Pat. ABC Express tried to deliver a package today, but you weren't home, so they left it with me. If you like, I'll bring it over tonight around eight o'clock. Let me know if you'll be home. Three. Hi, Andre. This is Susan. I'd like to invite you to my birthday party on Saturday. I hope you can come. Bring a friend if you like. I'll be out till late tonight, so I'll be in touch tomorrow to give you more details. Bye. Four. This is Classic Records. The CD you ordered is in. Please come by and pick it up, or if you like, we can send it to your office. Please let us know which you'd prefer. Five. Andre, hi. This is Kathy. Sorry I missed you. Thanks for your invitation to dinner tomorrow. It sounds lovely, but unfortunately I can't go. I have to work late. I'll try you tomorrow morning again before nine. Bye. Six. This is Doctor Costello's office. We're calling about your dental appointment. We cannot give you an appointment on Thursday, but we can give you one next Tuesday. Please give us a call to confirm. Page seventy-one, three. Let's listen. Task two. Listen again. Does the caller want Andre to call back, or will the caller telephone again later? Check the correct answer. Page seventy-two. Four. Let's listen. Task one. Daniel is listening to messages on his voicemail at work. Is each statement true or false? Listen and check the correct answer. One. Hi, this is Mary from Gold Coast Travel Agency. We've confirmed your flights for you, so come by and get your tickets any time today before seven p.m. We've also booked you for three nights in the Paradise Inn right on the beach. The hotel has a shuttle bus that takes you from the airport to the hotel, and it should be waiting for you outside the baggage claim area. It's a complimentary shuttle, so you don't have to pay for the trip. Although we recommend you tip the driver. A few dollars for each bag should be fine. All right. Call me at eight seven eight one nine nine zero when you get this message. Two. Hey, this is Peter from the mailroom. There's a package here waiting for you. So when you get a chance, could you come down and pick it up? Actually, it's after five o'clock, so I guess we're closed now. I'll leave the package for you at the front desk with the receptionist. Just pick it up tomorrow from her. Oh, I almost forgot. That letter you were waiting for—the urgent one with the legal documents. I'm sorry to tell you, it hasn't arrived yet. If you want to check again tomorrow morning, just give me a call at extension forty-four. Three. Hi, this is Frank. Hope you're not working too hard down there. Anyway, I was calling to ask you something. Would you like to have lunch with me? I want to take you to lunch at a great Italian restaurant near the harbor. They serve this really amazing vegetarian lasagna, and the service is really great, helpful and polite. Then, after lunch, I was thinking maybe we could take a boat trip on the river. I'm sure you'd enjoy it. Anyway, give me a call on Thursday and let me know if you're free. My number is seven five four nine three six seven. Four. Hi, this message is for Daniel. This is Mrs. Lee from Sunshine Dry Cleaners. 
The shirts you left with us on Friday are ready now. Please pick them up from the store any time on Monday. We're open until 9 p.m. In case you don't remember, we're on the corner of Elm Street and Highway 31, next to the movie theater. The total cost for the shirts is $25.99, but we don't take credit cards, so you'll have to pay cash. If you have any questions, please call me. The number is 468-3114. Page 72. 4. Let's listen. Task 2. Listen again. What is each caller's telephone number? Write the answers. <music> Unit 19. Touring a City. Page 74. 2. Let's listen. People are visiting a city. Where are they? Listen and number the pictures. 1. This is very unusual, isn't it? It's by one of our most famous artists. Nowadays his works sell for over $25,000 each, but I really don't understand how anybody would want to spend that much money on something like this. Do you? 2. It's okay. She's quite friendly. She probably just wants something to eat. I'm sure she loves those peanuts in your bag. 3. This is the best way to see the city, isn't it? You can see everything in a day just by sitting and looking through the window. I always do this the first day I visit a new place. 4. Oh, you have to try some of these. They're really delicious. They're so sweet. They grow them very near here. 5. This is an interesting old place. It was built over 200 years ago. It used to be the home of a very rich man. He lived here by himself until he died. Then his family gave it to the city so that now everybody can enjoy it. 6. I have to get some of these. I see them in all the souvenir shops. They're really amazing. And they're cheap, too. I think I'll take some back as gifts for the people in my office. Page 75. 3. Let's listen. Task 1. Tour guides are describing some of the things people will see or do on a tour. Listen and circle the correct answers. 1. Good afternoon, and welcome to Hollywood, California. I hope you all enjoy today's tour of the Houses of the Stars. Here we go. Now remember, you can buy photos of all the stars' houses when the tour is over, so please don't take any pictures during the tour, okay? Up on the left is the gorgeous mansion where Marilyn Monroe lived. After she got married, she left this house and moved to New York to live with her husband, a famous American baseball player named Joe DiMaggio. Now, just around the corner, you'll see a bright yellow house. Can you see it? Up on the hill? This is where James Dean lived. Finally, do you see that big iron gate on the right? Well, this is the entrance to Arnold Schwarzenegger's house. Unfortunately, you can't see the house from here, and we're not allowed to go inside the gate. 2. We're starting our tour by going up the tallest building in New York City, the Empire State Building. You can see the whole city from the top of this building. While you're up there, don't forget to look at the Statue of Liberty through the telescope, since we don't visit it on this tour. Next, we'll take the bus uptown to beautiful Central Park. I know the bus doesn't sound very glamorous, but I promise you it's just as fast as taking a taxi. When we get to Central Park, we'll visit the petting zoo and have a picnic lunch. Finally, we'll walk to another famous place, Rockefeller Center. In the winter, people go there to ice skate on the famous outdoor rink. Of course, there won't be any ice on a hot summer day like today, but there's a very nice photograph of the rink for sale at the gift shop. 3. 
Welcome to Kathmandu, Nepal. As you all know, the country of Nepal has some really tall mountains, including the world's tallest mountain, Mount Everest. But here in the capital city, Kathmandu, the mountains are almost always covered by clouds. So I'm afraid we probably won't be seeing Mount Everest today. However, we are going to visit an exciting market in the center of town where you can buy all kinds of souvenirs, including beautiful wool sweaters at really great prices. As we go through the market, though, please don't eat any of the food offered to you on the street. It looks delicious, but it might not be healthy. After visiting the market, we'll take a taxi to Pashupati Temple. This is one of the most important temples for the people of India and Nepal. Unfortunately, because we do not belong to their religion, we won't be able to go inside the temple. We can still look and touch the beautiful statues outside it, though. Four. Welcome to Chicago. We're standing in front of Wrigley Field, one of the most famous baseball stadiums in the United States. There's no game today, but there is one tomorrow, so you can buy tickets for it while we're here. Next, we're going to take a bus down to the Chicago Art Institute and spend a few hours looking at all the great paintings they have inside. Unfortunately, the museum's most famous painting, Summer in the Park, is not on display today. It's being cleaned. After the museum, we'll take a boat ride down the Chicago River. As we float down the river, you'll see the city's great skyscrapers go right over your head. Finally, we'll try some delicious Chicago-style pizza at a very famous restaurant. About 80 years ago, the legendary gangster Al Capone used to eat there. Page 75. 3. Let's listen. Task 2. Listen again. Are these statements true or false? Check the correct answer. Page 76. 4. Let's listen. Task 1. People are talking about the tours they took. What was good or bad about each tour? Listen and check the correct answers. 1. Have you taken a tour since you've been here? Yes, I went on one last weekend. What was it like? Well, we didn't see a lot. We mainly went to a lot of shops. I would have preferred to see more of the museums and famous buildings. I'm not really interested in shopping. And the bus they took us in was so old and slow. They should put it in the museum. Really? Did you say anything to the guide about it? Well, the problem was he didn't speak English very well. And he wasn't really very friendly. That's too bad. But we did have a nice lunch on the tour. And the whole tour was very cheap, so it wasn't all bad. But I don't think it was worth the time or money, even though it was cheap. 2. What was your city tour like? Well, we saw lots of interesting places on the tour. I was totally exhausted at the end of it, but I'm really glad I took it. You should try it. Did you go by bus? Yes, we had a nice, comfortable bus and a very helpful guide. You know how some guides talk all the time? This one didn't. He gave us just enough information, but not too much. Where did they take you for lunch? Oh, some dirty little place near the center of town. I didn't eat much because the food didn't look very good to me. That's too bad. Was the tour expensive? No, not at all. It was very reasonable. 3. Did you just get back from the tour? Yeah. It was really good. We visited all the places of interest. I'm glad we took it. Did you take a bus or a van? We took a bus. There were only 15 of us in it, so we had lots of room. It was a new, clean one, so it was pretty comfortable. Did you have a guide? Oh, yes. She was great. A young student, I think. She really knew her stuff. How was lunch? Awful. We just had some fast food along the way. How much was the tour? Well, it was pretty expensive. That was the only problem. One hundred dollars. I think they should have charged us about fifty. But anyway, I think it's definitely worth doing this tour. Four. So how was the tour? 
It was disappointing, actually. That's too bad. Yeah, we didn't get to see very much. It was too short. I wanted to see a lot more. Really? It wasn't very comfortable either. The bus wasn't air conditioned, so it got very hot and stuffy after a while. Uh huh. Anyway, the guide was very helpful. He gave us some very interesting information and told a lot of jokes, so that was fun. And we had a really good lunch at a seafood restaurant. So, was the tour worth it? Well, it was only fifteen dollars, which is pretty reasonable. But if you want to take a tour, you should try a different tour company. Page seventy six. Four. Let's listen. Task two. Listen again. Would each person recommend the tour? Check the correct answer. Unit 20, Airports, page 78. 2. Let's listen. Where do these people want to go? Listen and check the correct picture. 1. Could you tell me where Departure Gate 5 is, please? Yes. Just take the escalator up to the next level and turn right. All the gates are upstairs. Thanks. 2. Excuse me. Where's the baggage claim area? It's downstairs. Take the escalator over there near the currency exchange. Go down to level one. You can get your bags there. Three. Where are the restrooms, please? Just go straight. They're on the left, just across from the check-in counters. Thanks. Oh, dear, I think I'd better hurry. I need to change this baby right away. Four. Excuse me, how can I get a shuttle bus to the parking lot area for Terminal B? Buses and taxis are on the next level. Just go up those stairs over there and turn right. The shuttle comes every five minutes. Page 79. Three. Let's listen. Task one. What are these people talking about? Listen and circle the correct answer. One. Excuse me, this is Terminal A, isn't it? That's right. Can you tell me how I get from here to Terminal B? Yes. Go out the main entrance and turn right. Go over the footbridge to the baggage claim and wait there for the bus to Terminal B. There's one every five minutes. Do I need to buy a ticket? No, it's free. Two. Excuse me, do you know what time the flight from Tokyo arrives? You can check it on one of the monitors over there, but let me see if I can find it for you. Thanks. Hmm. It looks like it's delayed. Oh. So do you know what time it's arriving? They haven't announced the arrival time yet, so why don't you check again on the monitor in about 15 minutes? Okay. Thanks again. Three. Excuse me, how can I get to the Wilson Hotel from the airport? Check at the information counter on level one. They have maps there. Are you driving? Car rentals are on level one as well. No, I'd like to get a bus if possible. I think there's a shuttle bus to the hotel in front of the airport. Oh, thanks. Do you know if the hotel is very far from here? Actually, it's really close. It's about a ten-minute ride. Four. Is it possible to buy souvenirs and gifts here? Yes. Go to level two. There's only one store, a duty-free shop, in the departure area. Do I need to go through customs and immigration first? Yes. You'll find the shop right in front of you after you go through. And do you know if they take credit cards or do I need to use cash? Either is fine, but I'm not sure which cards they accept. Page 79. 3. Let's listen. Task 2. Listen again. Are these statements true or false? Check the correct answer. Page 80. 4. Let's listen. Task 1. People are talking about airports in different cities. Listen and check the correct answers. 1. What's the airport like in your town? 
Well, it's only a short distance from the center of town, so that's good. Yes. And it's pretty easy to get there. It only costs about five dollars by taxi, or you can take a bus from most of the hotels. Is it a big airport? It's fairly big, but it's not a very pleasant place to spend time. How come? There isn't much to do there. They really should put in some stores and cafes. That would help. Luckily, you don't have to spend much time there because it usually only takes about five minutes to check in and go through customs and immigration. Two. What's the new airport like? It's fantastic. Much better than the old one. Is it far from town? Not really. It's only about twenty kilometers from the city, so it doesn't take long to get there. That's good. Yes. Now I can get out there on a fast train, which makes the trip very comfortable. How nice! What are the facilities like at the airport? It's almost like a big shopping mall. There are department stores, shops, a game center, and even a gym. It sounds great. Yeah, it is. The only trouble is, it's always very crowded, so it can take a while to get through check-in. They really need to add some more check-in counters to speed things up. Three. Is the new airport close to town? Yeah, really close. Does it take long to get to the airport? Well, you have to go by taxi or train, so it depends on how long it takes you to get a taxi. There are never enough taxis that will go to the airport, so you have to wait for a while. You can go by train, but it's not very easy to get on when you're carrying bags. There really should be a bus service into town. I agree. Yeah, but once you get there, it's okay. There are lots of good duty-free stores, and the restaurants are pretty good. Try the Italian restaurant there; it's excellent. Does it take long to check in? No, check-in usually goes pretty quickly. Four. What do you think of the airport? Well, it's far from downtown, and when the traffic is bad, it can take an hour and a half to get there. The city really needs to build a new airport that is closer to the city. Do you usually drive to the airport? No, I usually take the airport bus. The bus is pretty nice. It's clean and comfortable, and it's a lot cheaper than driving because you don't have to pay for parking. Is there much to do there while you wait for your flight? Sure. There are a couple of stores that sell souvenirs and magazines. There are also a couple of fast food places, and they're fine for coffee and a sandwich. How long does it take to check in? It doesn't take long. They're pretty efficient. Page eighty, four. Let's listen. Task two. Listen again. What phrase completes each statement? Write the correct letter. <music> Unit twenty one, hotels, page eighty two. Two, let's listen. People are checking into a hotel. What do they have to do? Listen and circle the correct answers. One. Hello, my name's Bill Sampson. I have a reservation. Just a moment, please, Mr. Sampson. Ah,、uh, yes. Would you mind filling out this form, please? Thanks. Could I also see your passport? Here it is. Thank you. Will you be paying by credit card? Yes. I have it right here. Thank you. Two. Yes, I'd like to check in, please. Certainly. Do you have a reservation with us? Yes. The name's Peter Fox. That's funny. I can't find your name in the computer. Do you have your confirmation number? Yes. It's six nine one three. Oh, I see. Sorry, your name was spelled wrong. And could I see your passport, please? Here you are. Okay. How will you be paying for your room? I'll pay cash. In that case, I'll have to ask you for a deposit. That's fine. Three. I'd like to check in. My name's Pennington. Would you mind spelling your name for me so I can check it on the computer? Yes, it's P E N N I N G T O N. Ah,、uh, yes, here it is. Can I see some form of identification, please? Is a driver's license okay? Yes, that's fine. Thanks. 
Do I need to fill out a registration form? No, you are already registered. Just sign this card, please. Four. Yes, I'd like a room, please. Do you have a reservation? No, I didn't think I'd need one. I'm with City Travel. Oh, yes. Then can I see some form of identification? Sure. Here's my company ID. Or would you prefer my passport? Your company ID is fine. Do you need my credit card? Yes, please. And would you fill out this registration card? Page 83. 3. Let's listen. Task 1. What kind of room does each guest want? Listen and check the correct answers. 1. Would you like a single or a double room? Oh, it's just for me, so a single is fine. Smoking or non-smoking? I'm a non-smoker. And the standard or deluxe room? The deluxe is an extra $20. I'll take the cheaper one, please. Sure. Just one thing. I'm a very light sleeper. Can I get a room away from the street? I find the traffic noise can be a problem. I'm sorry, ma'am. There aren't any more rooms available on that side. But you'll find the rooms are very quiet even on the street side. Oh. Okay, then. Two. What kind of room would you like? Are there any deluxe rooms available? My wife and I want to give ourselves a treat. Yes, there are. So that'll be the double deluxe. And you'd like a non-smoking room? Definitely. Neither of us smokes. Okay. You're all set. You're in room 701. I'll have the bag sent up to your room right away. You'll find a complimentary fruit basket in the room. That's nice. Thanks. Oh, and we'll need a wake-up call at 7 a.m. Can you arrange that? Sure. No problem. Enjoy your stay. 3. What kind of room would you like? Oh, just something simple. The cheapest you have will be fine. So you don't want the deluxe, then? No, thanks. I can give you a standard single on the second floor. The lower floors are cheaper. Sounds perfect. But the only one I have available at that rate is a smoking room, I'm afraid. Oh, that's what I want. No problem, then. I need to iron some clothes. Is there an iron in the room? I'm afraid there isn't. Oh. Could you please send an iron up to my room? Sure. Four. Will that be a room for the two of you? Yes, that's right. Do you need a smoking room? No, we don't. And we'd like a room on a high floor, please. Let me see if we have one available. Yes, we do. Good. Would you like a deluxe room? It's a little more expensive, but it's much bigger. Oh, it doesn't matter about the size. The ordinary room will be fine. Certainly. And is it possible to get coffee and, say, some sandwiches at this hour? We're a little hungry. Sure. I can send some up to your room if you like. Thanks. That'd be great. Page 83. 3. Let's listen. Task 2. Listen again. What else does each guest request? Circle the correct answer. Page 84. 4. Let's listen. Task 1. People are discussing their rooms. Listen and check the correct information. 1. Is your room okay? Well, it's certainly big enough. That's a nice change. A lot of hotel rooms these days are very small. There's also plenty of space in the bathroom. That's good. I wish I had a better view, though. There's nothing to see except the cars in the parking garage. You could always change. I guess so, but I can't be bothered. Anyway, it's great to have a TV and a fax machine in the room. There's also a coffee maker, so I can make coffee whenever I want it. I was a little disappointed that there was nothing, not even a bottle of water, in the refrigerator when I checked in. But I called down and asked them to fill it up, and they did that right away. 2. Is your room big enough for the two of you? Well, it's kind of small. By the time we put our bags on the floor, there was hardly any room to move. But you should see the bathroom. It's almost as big as the bedroom. 
It's great, but isn't that strange? A bathroom bigger than the room. It is. What floor are you on? We're on the second floor, so we don't really see anything interesting. Just the street and the building next to us. Is there anything much in the room? Just the bed and a tiny refrigerator big enough for two bottles of water. The bed is as hard as a rock. I could hardly sleep last night. The manager said they would bring me a softer mattress later. Well, that's good. Three. Is your room at the hotel okay? It's not bad. It's a good-sized room, so that's nice. The bathroom is absolutely tiny, though, and it doesn't have an electrical outlet, so I can't use my hair dryer in there. That's inconvenient. At least I can look out at the beautiful park across the street. I like to be able to see trees from my window. That sounds lovely. Is there a lot in the room? No, not really. Just an old TV, but no refrigerator or anything else. It was really hot last night, and I couldn't sleep, so I spoke to the manager about it. She sent up an electric fan as soon as I called. That should help. Four. Is your room okay? It's pretty good, thanks. That's good. How big is the room? Well, it could be bigger. It really is pretty small. There's just enough room for one chair beside the bed. It does sound small. Yeah, but my only real complaint is with the shower. The water is either much too hot or way too cold. I'm going crazy. Luckily, I spoke to the manager, and he's sending a plumber up tomorrow. That's nice of him. How about the view? Oh, I do love the view of the city at night. It's wonderful. That's fantastic. What does the room have in it? Well, there's a really nice TV and a stereo. Plus, there's a fax machine and one of those mini fridges. Everything I need. Page eighty-four. Four. Let's listen. Task two. Listen again. What did each guest complain about? Circle the correct answer. <music> Unit twenty-two, traffic, page eighty-six. Two, let's listen. People are making announcements about traffic conditions. Listen and number the pictures. One. There's been an accident on northbound Route 101. A truck is overturned and traffic is very congested. So keep away from 101 North until further notice. Two. Traffic is moving smoothly today on the Kennedy Bridge. Traffic is unusually light. There are very few cars on the bridge at this time. Three. The new Harbor Bridge is very busy today. Traffic is moving very slowly across the bridge. It's bumper to bumper, so avoid the bridge if you can. Four. There has been a traffic accident on Watergate Drive. It looks like two cars had a head-on collision. There are also a couple of ambulances there, so keep away from Watergate Drive. Five. Highway 25 is closed for repairs today, so better stay away from there. No traffic will be allowed on Highway 25 all day. Six. Don't forget, it's the annual marathon today. Right now, there are hundreds of runners on the road. Pine Street and all the streets from Pine through Oak are closed until 2 p.m. Page 87. Three. Let's listen. Task one. These people have to go somewhere. How will each person get there? Listen and circle the correct answer. One. Are you going to take the bus downtown, or are you going to take your bike? I think there's too much traffic on the road today to go by bike. It's not safe to ride in traffic. I guess there's so much traffic because of the big football game. Well, look, I'm driving downtown. Can I give you a ride? Hey, thanks. So, do you use your bike very often? Not during the week, but I ride it pretty often on the weekend. Two. How are you going to get downtown? Are you going to drive? I don't think so. I just heard the traffic report on the radio. It seems there is a traffic jam on the freeway. They said a couple of buses have broken down. I guess it'll be quicker to take the subway. 
Absolutely. Three. Gosh, I wonder how much longer we'll have to wait for a bus. We've waited half an hour already. Do you think we should go back and get the car? Oh, no. I hate driving at night. Let's take a taxi. I don't want to be late for the movie. Good idea. I'll call for one on my cell phone. They usually come pretty quickly. Four. How are you going to get home from the restaurant on Sunday, Harry? Oh, I can just take a bus or a taxi. There are usually plenty of taxis around that area at night. Yes, but not on a Sunday night. You might wait for a long time. Why don't you ask Kevin to drive you home? He's having dinner with us, and he lives near you. That's right. I'll ask him. Five. What's the traffic like downtown today? It's pretty bad. One of the traffic lights is broken, so all the traffic is backing up. Oh. How should I get to my doctor's appointment? Drive? Take a taxi? A taxi won't be any faster than driving. Well, then, I'll probably take the subway to the station and then walk from there. Yeah, today I think that's the fastest way. Six. How do you plan to get to your friend's house? Do you need a ride? How's the weather? It's really nice out. Oh, thanks anyway, but I'll ride my bike. I was going to take the bus, but I need to get some exercise. All right, but be careful of the traffic. Page 87. 3. Let's listen. Task 2. Listen again. Are these statements true or false? Check the correct answer. Page 88. 4. Let's listen. Task 1. People are describing solutions to traffic problems in their cities. What did each city do? Listen and circle the correct answer. 1. In my town, public transportation was never very good. You had to drive everywhere, so there was always traffic. The government wanted to make public transportation easier than driving cars. They bought some nice new buses, for example, and they added air conditioning to the ones we already had. They also began offering lower bus fares on the weekends, so more people would be encouraged to try the new buses. They raise taxi fares, too. I guess they figure that if taxis cost more, people might think about using buses more. 2. Well, the problem was that thousands of people drove into the city center every day, and there weren't enough parking spaces. So the government wanted to make parking easier. But they didn't build more parking garages. Instead, they tried to keep cars out of the city center. Recently, they started making people who drive their cars downtown pay a daily fee. You have to pay $10 if you want to drive your car into the center between 8 a.m. and 6 p.m. At the same time, they have raised the parking lot rates, so people think twice before they drive their car downtown. 3. Traffic was a real problem around here. It moved so slowly. Last year, the government turned a bunch of streets downtown into one-way streets. This helped the traffic move more quickly. Special lanes on roads just for buses were built at the same time. If you're caught driving your car in a bus lane, you have to pay a fine. And it's a really high fine. Also, they passed a law last year that says you can only drive your car downtown three days a week. You have to display a special pass in your car that says which days you're allowed to drive downtown. 4. Air pollution in our city was a huge problem, and we really need to lower the pollution in our city. I guess that's why the government started putting special bicycle lanes on the streets downtown. That way, people can ride their bikes to work instead of using their stinky cars. They also made a rule that says... There must be at least two people in your car if you want to drive downtown during the week. They also ordered these amazing new pollution-free buses. They use electricity, so they don't put anything bad into the air. Page 88. 4. Let's listen. Task 2. Listen again. 
What problem did each city have? Write the correct letter. Unit 23. Roommates. Page 90. 2. Let's listen. People are talking about their roommates. Listen and circle the two words that best describe each person. 1. I like sharing a room with Greg. He's very quiet and always asks me if it's okay for him to listen to the radio or watch TV. He likes to keep the room nice and clean, just like I do. He helps me a lot with homework, too. He's really smart and is always happy to check over my assignments. 2. Donna loves baking. She's always making things and giving them to her friends. Cakes, pies, bread. She bakes everything. No wonder I'm putting on weight. She loves calling people on the phone, and she spends hours talking to them. She really should spend more time on her schoolwork, though. 3. I have a great roommate. She's neat and she makes me laugh a lot. She's got a wonderful sense of humor. She's really smart, too. She studies all the time. I sometimes wish she'd take more time off to make friends because she hardly knows anyone. She doesn't seem to feel comfortable when she's around people. 4. Tom's awful as a roommate. He always says he's going to do something, like pay the phone bill, but then he doesn't do it. He never does much to keep the place clean, either. He just throws things on the floor and expects me to put them away. He doesn't care that I have to live in his mess. It drives me crazy. 5. Bob and I get along pretty well. He keeps the place really clean and neat. The only thing is, he loves to party. He's always inviting friends over, and they sit around and talk really loudly until it's very late. It makes it really hard for me to study. I've asked him not to do it when I'm studying, but he still does. I guess it doesn't bother him because he never studies. 6. Pam is difficult to live with because she has very strong opinions. She always has to be right about things, and she just sits around all day watching TV. She never does anything active. The worst thing is, she loses her temper very quickly. I think I need to find a new roommate. Page 91. 3. Let's listen. Task 1. People are comparing their new roommate with their old roommate. Which one does each person prefer? Listen and check the correct answer. 1. How are you getting along with your new roommate? Well, she's very different from the one I had last semester. Really? Yeah. My old roommate used to play her radio really late and get about 20 phone calls a night. I could never get my work done. Luckily, my new roommate is very quiet and hardly talks on the phone. I really like her. 2. Do you have the same roommate this semester? No, I have a new one, unfortunately. I don't like him too much. Oh? Yeah, David, my roommate from last semester, was really neat and clean. My new one leaves his clothes all over the place. The place is always a mess. 3. Has your new roommate moved in yet? Yes, last week. Is he okay? Oh, yeah. I am so glad my old roommate left. He was always in a bad mood about things. My new one is so friendly and always happy. We get along really well. 4. What's your new roommate like? Oh, we've already started having arguments. How come? She likes to have her friends come by all the time. The place is always full of her noisy friends. Oh, that's too bad. You used to get along so well with the old one. I know. She was really considerate. 5. How are you and your roommate getting along? Pretty well. She usually comes home late, but she's always careful not to make any noise in case I'm sleeping. She's very thoughtful. I like that.
That's nice. Yeah, she's a real change from my old roommate. She only ever cared about herself. Six. Has your new roommate arrived yet? Yes, he has. He's really fun. Oh, good. Yeah, he has a great sense of humor, so we're always joking and telling stories. That's great. Your old roommate never told jokes. Yes, he was so serious about everything. Page 91. 3. Let's listen. Task 2. Listen again. What word or phrase describes each person's favorite roommate? Write the correct letter. Page 92. 4. Let's listen. Task 1. People left voicemails for their roommates. What do they want their roommates to do? Listen and circle the correct answer. 1. Hi, Paul. This is Ted. Listen, could you do me a favor? I left my chemistry book on my bed. I hope you can find it. The bed's a mess because I didn't have time to make it this morning. Could you bring my book with you to class this afternoon? I need it for class, and I don't have time to go back for it. Thanks. 2. Anne, this is Margaret. I've invited a couple of friends to come by tonight at 7.30 to watch TV with us. You know them, Dave and Sue. Would you be able to pick up some snacks? I have a class till 7, so I won't have time to buy them before the guests arrive. I'll pay you back when I get home. Thanks. 3. Hey, Ken. It's John. Guess what? My folks just sent me an email to say they'll be over to visit around 5. Sorry, but I left the living room in a real mess. Could you give it a quick cleanup? I have football practice till 4.30, and I can't get back to do it myself. We can all go out for dinner together later. I'll buy you whatever you want to eat. 4. Brenda, this is Carrie. I'm calling because we're completely out of food. Sorry, but some friends came by earlier and we finished everything. We were really hungry. The refrigerator is completely empty. Could you get a few things for dinner on the way home? I have to finish an assignment, so I won't be home till about 8. By the way, I cleaned the apartment. I hope you like it. Page 92. 4. Let's listen. Task 2. Listen again. Are these statements true or false? Check the correct answer. <music> Unit 24. Travel. Page 94. 2. Let's listen. Cindy is talking about her vacation. Listen and number the pictures. So, how was your trip to San Francisco, Cindy? Oh, pretty good, mostly. Mostly? Yeah, it started off okay. I did all the usual things. You know, I took a ride on the cable car. That was fun. I know, I love the cable cars. Then I looked around Chinatown. The food there is terrific. Oh, yeah. Anyway, on my second day, I decided to rent a car. I wanted to get out of the city and look around. Were you on your own? Uh-huh. So, first I drove across the Golden Gate Bridge and stopped to take some photos. Then I decided to drive out to Napa Valley. Napa Valley? Yeah. That's where they grow grapes to make wine. It's really beautiful. All green. Great vineyards. Unfortunately, while I was driving, I had a slight accident. Oh, no. Were you hurt? No, but it was awful. I had to leave the car and take a taxi all the way back to the hotel. It cost me an arm and a leg. Oh, no. What a vacation. Page 95. 3. Let's listen. Task 1. People are calling home while they are on vacation. Listen and check the word that describes each person. 1. Hi, Mom. This is Jill. Just calling to say hello. I'm having a wonderful time. Last week, I met this gorgeous Italian guy. He's really nice. 
Um, he doesn't have a job yet, but I'm sure he's going to be very successful. A and guess what? He wants to marry me. He gave me a beautiful ring. I think it belonged to a relative. Anyway, what do you think? I'll call back later. Bye. Two. Hi, Mom. Hi, Dad. This is Sean. I'm having a terrific time, but I'm not relaxing much. The weather is great, so I'm always busy doing something. Things are really expensive in Hawaii. The hotel, the clothes, the food, everything. And I'm completely out of money. So can you send me some money as soon as possible? Thanks. Love you. Bye. Three. Mom, this is John. Listen, I'm going to be back a day late. Traffic to the airport this morning was terrible. By the time I arrived, my plane had left. I also lost my wallet in the rush. It has all my credit cards in it. And the airline won't help me. I'm not sure what to do. I'll call you later. Bye. Four. Oh, Bob. This is Rachel. Sorry I missed your call last night. I went out for dinner, and today I've got a terrible stomachache. It must be something I ate. Anyway, I'm going to see the doctor. Don't worry. I'm sure I'll be fine. Talk to you soon. Five. Hi, Dad. This is Mary calling from Paris. Sorry I missed you. Listen, something terrible happened. I went on a bus tour this morning and dropped my glasses somewhere. I can't find them, and I can't see anything without them. Can you call me back as soon as you get this message? Six. Hi, Mom. This is Margaret calling. Listen, I won't be home tomorrow night. They changed my flight, and there's no flight tomorrow. So, uh, I'll be home on Friday. Don't worry about me. I'm excited because I can do a few more things here in Hong Kong. See you soon. Page 95. 3. Let's listen. Task 2. Listen again. Why does each person call? Circle the correct answer. Page 96. 4. Let's listen. Task 1. People are describing travel experiences. Is each statement true or false? Listen and check the correct answer. 1. Cassandra I met this really nice family when I was in Korea last year. I was in a restaurant, and I was having trouble understanding the menu. The wife came over and asked me what I wanted to eat and told me all about Korean food. Then they asked me to join them at their table, and they paid for my dinner. They also invited me to their house. We became friends, and we keep in touch now by email. They'll take me to a famous temple the next time I go back. Isn't that fabulous? I can't wait to see that temple. 2. Brooke Once when I was in Italy, I took a bus trip from Rome to Florence. The bus was very crowded, and I had to stand most of the way. I had a couple of small bags with me. One was a backpack that had my wallet in it. I kept it in front of me for the entire trip, but when I got to Florence, I couldn't believe what had happened. Someone had cut a hole in my backpack, put in their hand, and removed my wallet. Then they took the money out and put the wallet back inside my backpack. I never noticed a thing. It really ruined my vacation because I couldn't pay to get into any museums. So now I want to go back again next summer and really see the museums I missed. 3. Corey Last summer I flew from London to Casablanca in Morocco to do some research on the traditional music there. Unfortunately, my bags didn't arrive with the flight. I thought they would probably arrive on the next flight, but they didn't. I had nothing to wear except the clothes I was wearing. Luckily, the airline gave me some money to buy some extra clothes and things. The bags didn't turn up till four days later. I was really glad to get my bags back, because I had a lot of important stuff inside them. 
but I had to wait around until they turned up, so I didn't get a chance to listen to any of the traditional music. That's why I want to get back there again sometime. 4. Melanie I was on vacation in Australia last summer when I got a terrible case of the flu. I had to stay in bed for four days, and it was a week before I was feeling well enough to go out. I have a cousin in Sydney who was really kind and spent a lot of time with me until I was better. By then, I only had three days of sightseeing left before I had to leave. I saw the Sydney Opera House, and that was about it. The most awful thing is I didn't have the chance to go scuba diving. I want to go back and scuba dive there. It has the best coral reefs in the world. Page 96. 4. Let's listen. Task 2. Listen again. Why does each person want to go back again? Write the correct letter. This is the end of Compact Disc 3.